Hello and welcome to the Learning Analytics Tools course in NPTEL. This will be a 2 weeks course. I am Rangkumar Rajendran, Assistant Professor at Education Technology Department of IIT Bombay. Uh, I offered the previous course called Introduction to Learning Analytics, 4 week course uh, prior to this course. If you have done this course, you can see the same content or similar content for first 2 weeks. However, this course does not require any pre request. So, even if you are not done the introduction to learning analytics course, this course you can start. Due to web 2.0, the users can generate lot of data. Uh, for example, in social media networks like a Facebook, there are 1.56 billion users, monthly active users. And Instagram, uh, Qits, it's the lot of data has been generated. But what can we do with this data? So, how to use this data? For example, lot of organizations are trying to extract values or patterns from this data and uh, using a lot of cloud computing, a lot of servers to try to understand what is the user behavior. For example, in Netflix, the video streaming websites like Netflix, the data of US users viewing behavior, which movies they watch, the ratings, the likes and dislikes are used to recommend a next video for them. Similarly, in uh, uh, e-commerce websites like Amazon, the users based on users purchases, the system can recommend what will be the next product to purchase. In future, we can use this big data of uh, DNA and the systems can come up with the cure for diseases like cancers or malaria, it is possible because the lot of data available, a lot of DNA data of the humans and lot of medical data is available. We can use those data, we might come up with the cure for these diseases. Like in other domains, in education domain also, we have a lot of data has been generated now. It is because of use of digital tools like uh, learning management systems like a Blackboard, Moodle or uh, there is a lot of educational apps coming in, uh, Google Classrooms, massive online open uh, courses like MOOCs and Coursera, NPTEL or MIT course where lot of these data has been generated. The user's interaction with these interfaces has been collected and stored. What can we do with this data? Let us start with the first activity. Assume that you are a teacher, uh, you may not be a teacher, but please assume that you are a teacher and teaching the same course for the same class or for last 5 years to the third year students. So, you are teaching say third year electronic devices course for last 5 years. So, you have data of the students uh, for last 5 years, but their background, their profile, their performance in the exams, midterms, if you have done assignments, assignment, assignment scores, uh, you might have some feedback in the classroom, all this data you might have it. If you are, if you are to use this data to improve your teaching strategy or to improve the learners performance, what step will you take? Please pause this video and think about your answer, write down your answer, after writing down your answer and resume the video to continue. If your answers contain the words like I will collect data, I will analyze data, or I want to understand the learners learning or I want to improve my teaching performance so that uh, the learners can learn better. If you have these kind of words, then you are thinking in learning analytics. You already started thinking how to analyze the data to provide those uh, analytics to the your data and can improve the students learning performance. Let us see what is the formal definition of learning analytics. The learning analytics definition is still a debatable one, but from the existing resources it can be the branch of analysis that makes use of students generated data for predicting educational outcome with the aim of tailoring education, with the aim of adapting the content so that student can learn better. Or from a LAC, LAC is the organization which started a uh, well, organization called SOLAR which starts a conference called LAC, the LAC 2011 conference on web page they posted this as the learning analytics definition. Learning analytics is a measurement, collection, analysis and reporting of data about learners and their context for purpose of understanding and optimizing learning and the environments in which it occurs. What does it mean? It says learning analytics is measuring, collecting 
and analyzing the data not just analyzing just for the analysis also for reporting this data to a stakeholders of the LDA. Reporting about learners and the contest the sole purpose is to understand how learners learn in that environment and can we do something to improve the learning in that environment. In this definition there are few terms what is the purpose the core purpose is to understand the learners learning process and help them so that they can learn better in the environment. Data collection what data to collect how to collect data in which environment what data to collect how to use those data and analyze what to look for in that data and why we have to analyze. Also if we want to report the data to whom we have to report the data. So, who are the stakeholders of LA? For example, for the stakeholders can be educators that is um, the teacher or the instructor. The availability of a real time insight into the performance of a learners uh, for example, if the teacher has a dashboard of the students working on a particular exam or particular uh, learning environment all the interaction is known given to the teachers by a dashboard a teacher can have a real time insight into the performance of learners including students who are at risk and uh, the teacher might know this particular students needs help the teacher can go and help them or the teacher finds out whole class having misconception in a particular topic the teacher can teach the topic in a better manner or give a remedial content to that. So, it will be very useful for the educators like a teachers or instructors. Similarly, for students for example, if students receive information about their performance compared to the peers in the classroom or their progress compared to the peers in the classroom that can help them to motivate and achieve their goal. For example, uh, if a student answers a question wrongly say the option B a student selected and he thinks the option might be correct, but if we show to the student that in our class almost 40 percent of students selected this particular option and they are wrong. The student might feel I am not the only one who is given a wrong answer. So, everybody did not under this, understand this concept. So, I can learn and I the students get motivated to continue. If the student thinks I am the only one do not understand anything in the class then they get demotivated they might and they might not in getting interested to for continue further. Also the student want to know how much I pro progress in this particular course. If the student knows that I progress 40 percent of uh, content in this course I need to do another say 20, 30 percent. A student can think of that saying that um, the student can think that ok I need to put more effort to continue this course or the student can decide whether to continue the course or drop the course. So, the learning analytics can help the students motivate them and encourage them to complete the course and also help them to compare their performance with their peers. Finally, the learning analytics data can be helpful for the administrator to make decisions in the world today with a lot of competition and less number of budgets and the competition is coming in the administrator should take a decision that should provide optimal, optimal solution for them whether to run a course or not. If the administrator knows that particular course receives very less number of students and they know the why and if they can predict how many students will join the course in the next year then they can make a decision whether to run a course or not they should convert the course into some other topic or something like that because it will it will save a lot of cost in the today's world because due to comp global competition in higher education it is always useful to look at the data and make a wise decisions. As, as you know that learning analytics is related to new field uh, even compared to the other new fields like a machine learning or artificial intelligence. Since it is a very new field there is no standard test book available for learning analytics. However, in this course we will cover the basics of learning analytics in terms of analytics applied to uh, education data. Then we will 
explain some tools useful for this course um, like a tools to analyze the data and we will also refer to some content from the test book. So, the test book for this course is and book of learning analytics from the solar community. The book is actually compilation of research articles explaining applications of LEA in a different fields. So, when you read this book you can understand that every chapter introduces something about learning analytics and uh, they will be applying LEA on some other topic. So, if you are interested in learning analytics after this course please take this book or read our papers in the recent conferences and you will understand the fields in learning analytics then you can pick one field which you like to pursue your research interest in LA. I will briefly describe the course outline in this um, video. In the week one we will be discussing what is learning analytics um, on academic analytics and what is the relation between this and with educational data mining, maybe briefly we will start about that. Then I will introduce what are the levels in learning analytics, the four levels in learning analytics uh, with examples. In week 2, uh, we will talk about the data collection, um, what data to collect in each environment. For data pre-processing, we might give you uh, links to the external sources. So, we want you to go and study uh, what is data pre-processing from the other resources and we might have a assimilation quiz based on that reading exercises. Also in week 2 we will introduce a tool called Veka as a freely open available open source tool uh, if everybody can use and uh, we will demonstrate the tool Veka which we will use it in our course going further. Also we will introduce um, the ethics and data privacy uh, when you collect data from the students what are the ethics you should follow. In week 3 we will introduce the basics of machine learning. This course is not meant to teach machine learning. Uh, also the course may not involve uh, mathematical details of each algorithm. So, this course is designed for anyone uh, with a very little mathematic background to understand and uh, how to collect data, how to start doing analysis. So, in a week 3 we will introduce uh, what is machine learning, what is supervised and unsupervised machine learning and uh, very basics introduction to what are the metrics you should uh, look for when you do the machine learning, uh, apply the machine learning algorithms for your data. Also in week 3 we will introduce a tool called Orange. Um, that tool is commercial, for commercial purpose it is uh, not free. However, for academic users if you have academic email ID it is free to use. So, we will demonstrate that uh, the tool called Orange. If you do not have access to that tool, you can continue using Weka in this course. In week 4, uh, we will introduce uh, descriptive analytics, uh, what, how to describe the data and that, what is data visualization and how to look at the data, how, how the data is generated in a dashboard uh, and we can show uh, using Excel or Google Sheet, you can produce all these visualizations from the data we have. Uh, we do not need a very sophisticated software for the research purpose. So, we can use Excel or Google Sheet uh, to visualize this data. And uh, in a week 5, um, we will introduce another tool uh, called ISAT. Uh, this tool is used for um, visualization also for the diagnosis purpose. This tool is developed by uh, our department. So, we will demo that the tool which will help you to uh, visualize the data transfer from uh, one stage to other stage in a time different time periods. And we will talk about the diagnostic analytics and uh, diagnostic analytics starts with correlation, regression, we will talk about correlations in week 5. In week 6, we will have a sequential pattern mining uh, and the tool for sequential pattern mining will be described. The tool will be available free and we will uh, upload the links to this tool and uh, anyone can use this tool if the data is formatted in right format. Uh, we will show the demonstration of that. Also we will introduce the another tool um, called uh, process mining, uh, the tool called ProEM. This is also freely available for educational purpose. Uh, so, anyone can use it uh, if you have educational uh, ID. Uh, also the ProEM is available for everyone, I think it is open source. So, by week 6, we will be introducing several tools like a Weka, Orange, ISAT, SPM tool and ProEM. So, 5 tools we plan to introduce in this course. So, after the mid semester break, um, in the week 7, we will um, talk about predictive analytics 
and uh, we talk very briefly about what are the features to select and doing a linear regression using the tool called Veka. So, Veka is again I mentioned it is open source, so anyone can use it. And in week 8 we will uh, talk about decision tree uh, and we will explain this with the orange. So, whenever we have a demonstration, when we are talking about explaining um, a particular algorithm with a tool, which means we will have a course assignments. So, you might be uh, you have to use the uh, tool and we provide a data using that data you have to predict something or you have to create something and report that as answers. So, yeah. So, when we are talking about this demonstration of tools, we will be having assignments in each week. And in week 8, uh, we will have um, describe what is decision tree with orange and um, we will talk about the naive base. As I mentioned this course, although it is not ML course, uh, we will touch all this algorithms which are very basics. Uh, we will explain the concepts, how it works. Then we will also show how to use um, tools to execute these algorithms. In week 9, we will go for the unsupervised um, machine learning that is clustering and we will show what is clustering and with a demo. In week 10, uh, we will jump uh, to a different field called uh, test analytics or natural language processing applied for educational domain. So, we will show you how we can use uh, test analytics to develop uh, algorithm that can automatically grade uh, students essays, a simple algorithm and also we will talk about the latest uh, development in NLP that is called word embedding or word vectors. And in week 11, we will talk about uh, multimodal learning analytics um, that is how to collect data from multiple sensors like uh, eye gaze data from eye, eye trackers or facial expressions for using webcam. Uh, log data or some biosensor data like EEG um, or um, EMG or GSR data. How can you collect these data and how can you use these data, analyze these data to uh, create a model? So, we will show um, a bit about what how to collect data, what is this data is used for, and what is this model looks like. Uh, in the final week, um, we will teach uh, about uh, advances, advanced topics in LA and what are the topics. It is basically topics uh, covered in the handbook of LA, also the latest topics uh, published in uh, LAC conference and EDM conferences. So, that is the course introduction. So, in this course, um, we briefly uh, describe what is definition of LA or LA means you have to collect data, analyze data then you have to report data to stakeholders to improve the performance of the students. Then we, we, we describe the course outline, the course outline involves 5 tools, lot of assignments and lot of data to collect and uh, lot of exercises in it. And uh, that is all for the motivation video, this is the first video, thank you for watching.